Hi creatives, it's Lauren Elizabeth here with Lauren Elizabeth Animal Art. And what I do is I take beginner and intermediate level artists and I take them to become masters of acrylic animal art while reducing stress. In today's video, we will be doing a step-by-step real-time painting of a lamb just in time for Easter. And I'll be applying a lot of the lessons and concepts I've been teaching about the creative process, about mindset, about color in this tutorial. But it doesn't end there. I'll also be showing you my technique for painting grass, for painting skies, uh, for painting white fur, tight curls, uh, color placement by value. This is chock full of goodies in here, guys, so you don't wanna miss it. All right, creatives, I wish you a blessed Easter. Now let's get painting. creatives so be sure to grab your traceable link down below transfer that using charcoal transfer paper to your paper or canvas I have instructions below there you'll also find the needed paint colors and the Arteza brushes I use and grab those pencils because we're gonna get real creative here even before we start painting I'll just be adding a horizon line but if you want to add maybe a barn to your background or maybe a fence or flowers in your foreground, or maybe a scarf or a hat or something like Easter eggs next to the lamb. Let your inspiration guide you. Anything that excites you, that ignites that creativity and gets you connected to this piece so it's that much more fun when we're painting it. All right, we can get drawing. Got my pencil and I'm gonna create the horizon line. So that is up to you if you want to make it up here and create less sky, more land, or if you want to lower it so you have more sky to paint and a little bit less grass. I'm going to put mine right here. It's right where that shoulder kind of sticks out, right below there. And if you even want to just draw straight across. I'm using a 4H graphite pencil, but feel free to use whatever pencil you have available around the edges because I want to paint that too and make sure that's a straight horizon line. Now you don't have to stop there. Get as creative as you want with that background and the foreground. Anything that comes to mind, why not? Just try it out. And I'd love to see your paintings if you want to join the public Facebook group. I have that link down below and you can share your creations. Let's just grab our palette knife, or if you don't have one, just use your brush. And I'm gonna create a purple and then blue and then more of a, like a white light blue right above the horizon line. So let's mix those colors up. So my purple kind of like splattered, exploded on me. So I'm gonna grab just a little bit of purple. You want a good amount because we want to paint our sides. You don't need much violet. Violet is a really dominant color, so just add a little bit to, to your white. All right, next I'm going to, I'm actually just going to not add violet to it yet. We'll do that later. I'm just going to use white and now my sky blue. I'm going to just take more blue or more white in a separate pile so I have more white for the other colors. And I'll do the same thing, just white and some sky blue. I'm going to bring my palette over so you can see a bit better. I really want that sky blue to be a lighter value than the violet. I want it to get dark, a little bit lighter, and then light. So this will be representing our dark value, medium value, light value. Okay, and then I'll just simply wipe that off. The bottom won't be just white. It'll almost be white. And that will be lots of white with a little bit of the blue we were just mixing up. So a little bit of this blue, very small amount, and white. 
Now, if you're breaking this painting up into multiple sessions, which you likely are, I recommend aluminum foil or saran wrap to cover your paint palette. That'll keep your paints wet for up to three days. For those of you that are just want to make sure it's a nice, even blend, I'm going to mix up just a small amount of this violet with some of the light blue we made. And that's a color we can tap into when we're joining those colors. This can be a very helpful method if you're blending a dark value into a medium value. You want to mix those two together ahead of time. If you're a beginner learning blending, this can make it a heck of a lot easier. All right, so let's grab our size 10 angle brush. I'm going to make sure it's clean and damp so it's been washed out. It's nice and clean. I'm dipping it in my clean water, dabbing it damp so it still has water left on the brush, not dry. And I'm going to go straight into the first color we mixed, which is the violet. We're going to work from top down, working on that sky first, and then the grass. And as I'm painting this, I also want to paint in my sides. Now I just want to say a little reminder, if I at any point go too fast, you always can press the pause or play button on your screen. Now here's the thing, if you made that too dark, say you just wanna lighten that violet up because you don't like how dark it is, just literally pick up some white and blend that straight on your canvas, just like this. As I move around those ears, I'm just blending that before it dries. Because once it's dry, you can't do any blending. All right, so I'm actually gonna stop right around the ears with my violet, and then we can start pulling in that blue. All right, so what I'm gonna do is not go to the blue yet, I'm gonna actually go to this color with some added white, because just because I, if you want, I lightened up that violet, so I'm also gonna lighten up that blue violet, blending it right above that head this angle brush is such a great brush. I love getting around the little curves and the lines, getting into nice little details with that point. Love these brushes. Okay, and then, so that won't be much of a strip because then we'll go straight in without me even washing my brush because we can do more blending. I'll go straight into that sky blue Beautiful blue, working my way down. And I, what we don't wanna do is leave a white outline around the sheep. We wanna cover up as much of that as we can, even going over the little lamb. See how I'm using my brush not like this, but like that, just allowing it to blend and smooth nicely, smooth out very nicely. And now is when I'm gonna wash up my brush because we want it really light here uh, by the horizon line. Gonna make sure it's still damp, but not sopping wet. Going straight into my uh, white with a little bit of that light blue. So in order to blend, we need those colors to overlap, both being damp, moving our brush from left to right in this case. I want the lightest area to be right above that horizon line. Now I wanna show you some differences here. On the right side, I do this gradual blend from top down, but on the left side, I work above the horizon line up so it makes a pretty sharp jump between this medium value and the light. Now, as long as it's still damp, you can either add white to lighten an area or blue to darken it. This is how I want you to think as you're mixing and applying and blending colors. If it looks too dark, add a little bit of white, blend that in, or if it looks too light, add a bit of your darker color. So for instance, I'm not gonna wash up my brush, but I'm just gonna get some of that paint off. And with a dry brush, a really nice tech, uh, way of 
blending is just with that dry brush. You're, you are taking some paint off, so you can always add more paint if you need to, but this is a great way to connect those colors very smoothly. Now, like I said, this does in fact take some paint off, so it can make your paint look very thin. However, it does a great job blending areas how I like to get my colors bold and bright and vivid is I add lots of layers. And so I'm gonna reapply more of the colors to the sky here. I wanna keep that wet because we'll be adding these subtle hints of clouds in the background. And by the way, do you notice how I'm using my brush right now? It's not vertically on my canvas, but at an angle so that the brush can just glide over that canvas, not leaving too many brush strokes, but that's quite all right because it actually helps us to create those clouds we'll be adding in a minute. Detail and imperfections just isn't that important in this early stage of the painting. We're gonna be in that ugly phase for quite a while until we get to the end and we can make adjustments to what we don't like. So keep a steady pace here so that our canvas doesn't dry before the clouds. Now guess what? We're actually not gonna wait for that sky to dry before we add the clouds. We're gonna add the clouds right now. So all I'm gonna use is another one of my favorite brushes, size eight cat's tongue brush. And I'm just gonna go on with white. See how I'm just blending that white right over a small little area? I want these clouds to be more horizontal and faded, so you can't see them too much, but you can still tell that they're there. And then in another area, I'm gonna add a little fluffy cloud. Now I have to be careful there because I just pulled some violet into that area. It works, I mean, clouds do that but just be careful how dark you're making those clouds because you want them to be light. And then I'll even add some more white before it dries just to really bring those out. And I want that to look like it's behind the, the lamb. So I'm having a little bit of it peek out from behind its neck. And I might just add another one right up top here. So I'll be spending the next two minutes adding more white, doing more blending, getting those clouds just right. Be sure to add any of the other things to your sky background. Maybe you wanna add a barn, maybe you wanna add a sunshine. Now, how are we doing? We doing okay? I'm going to encourage you guys right now to take in deep breaths, getting your mind centered, getting your body calm, getting really ingrained in this painting. So let's do four deep breaths in through the nose, out through the mouth.
Okay, so next we're gonna mix up the colors for our grass. And I always like to start with a grass green and phalo blue mixture. Get that a really deep, rich green. And then once that's dry, that's when we paint in the grass, especially because we have a lot of grass in the foreground. So I'll just go in with a dark green color, paint that below here, and then work on the sheep, and then paint the grass at the end. Here we go with our grass green and phalo blue. I'll actually have less phalo blue than grass green. I wanna have just a little bit of the phalo blue and lots of the grass green. And just very simply with any brush, but I'm gonna use a size five angle brush. With a clean, damp brush, I'll fill in the entire foreground with this grass green and phalo blue mixture. And you'll see that this brush is helpful for creating clusters of lines. You'll see I'll just add the beginnings of that, cutting over top that light blue on the horizon line. So I'm using the flat edge of my angle brush, making sure it's flat and cutting up vertically like that as I paint over that white. I'll, I'll just do that here along this line. The rest of it, I'm just gonna be painting in. Now the grass lines that we make that cut into that light blue doesn't have to be super tall. This is just the first layer. We will adjust those lines and make them a bit taller, more defined at the very end after we've painted the lamb. We're just getting that base down and this will also prevent too much of that white and sky blue getting into our green. So with Easter almost here, I wanted to share with you a really special verse. But with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or a single defect, he was chosen before the creation of the world, but was revealed in these last times for our sake. Now let's talk about the specifics when it comes to painting grass. So anytime I paint grass, I do this first. I lay down one layer of grass green mixed with phalo blue. I get a really solid layer down. I let that dry, and then I begin to add clusters of lines that progressively get lighter with each layer by me adding yellow to this color. So the layers on top will also be a little bit of phalo blue, grass green, and some added yellow. And so with each layer of those clusters of lines, I'll add a little bit more yellow until I get to that top layer, which has a little bit of titanium white. That's cadmium yellow that I use. And I begin with an angle brush, just like I'm doing now. And I progressively move uh, about after that third layer, I'm gonna start making those blades of grass even more thin and refined. That's when I move to my size one liner brush or even just my size one round brush by Arteza. Now, if my grass looks a bit dry, I'll add in yellow ochre along with the cadmium yellow. Sometimes I'll even add a bit of brown. The raw sienna will do a good job if the grass is really dingy and dry and um, dying. And then if I really need to darken up those greens, I'll add some red, permanent red, to the original mixture of phalo blue and grass green. That's because the complement of green is red and that's a great way to darken up a green without making it look muddy. And for you newbies here to complementary colors, those complements are orange and blue, yellow and violet, and red and green. I really highly recommend you memorize those, especially if you really wanna create balanced, vibrantly colorful animal portraits. Now, if you're still working on the grass, take your time. I just want to say after you complete the grass, wash out your water, give your background and the grass time to dry or get tacky so we're not smearing it as we paint the lamb. Now, did you know I offer custom pet portraits, merch, and fine art prints?
It's been quite a fun journey learning how to print from home, getting my artwork on bags and notebooks and cards, but everything in my shop I've held, I've touched, I've scanned to prove the color and the quality. All of it is hope-inspired, cheerful, and very colorful cat, dog, and wildlife art. Most of it is made using acrylics, but some of it is also made using Copic markers and colored pencils. Check it out by going to laurensanimalart.etsy.com. That's laurensanimalart.etsy.com. So with my size one liner brush, clean and damp, I'm gonna go in with a mixture. I don't need much, so I'm just gonna add a little bit on my brush on the tip of it, phthalo blue and violet, because I'm going real abstract here. I'm not really gonna use any of my blacks. Okay, and I'm just going to, my sky is just tacky and so is the grass. So that makes it real easy to carefully paint in those eyes. I'll even cut in to where that line is on the right eye. See that line that comes in front? I'm gonna create that line. And same with the other eye. I'll fill that eyeball in. All right, and we will use that same color for the nostrils. Now, of course, you're welcome to use black for these areas, the eyes, nose, and mouth but I like to create these semi-realistic animal portraits. Sometimes I'll use black, but when I really wanna go abstract, this is, these are the colors that I use for those areas. And then we have a little bit of an open mouth, and I'll use this color for that too. And it kind of makes like a little, goes up along the middle of the lips, and then a line for the open, partially open mouth. So next I'm gonna work on the ears. And what I wanna do is actually start a bit lighter. This is, I wanna keep those real strong pink and brown highlights because our light source is coming from the back, more like the back right. And so it just lights up the, the pinks in those ears. So what I'm gonna do for that, oh, I didn't add raw sienna. So I'm gonna go in with my fluorescent pink by Liquid X with some of the raw sienna, and then I'll also add some of the white. So that's fluorescent pink, raw sienna, and white. I'm gonna test out the color. I'm gonna use, use any brush, again, any brush you want, but I'm gonna use a size two filbert brush. Let's test this color out, perfect. That's the best one for this color. Lovely, and I'll just fill in the inside of the ear, not the outside. Now I always like to give you a heads up uh, as to what's coming next, because we want this to be relatively damp so we can blend in our darker colors into it. So work at a good steady pace so we can squeeze that in before it dries. And very simply, you're gonna need a smaller brush. So I'll go back to my size one liner brush. You want something that is just a smidge darker. So I'm gonna add more raw sienna to this color we just made mixed. I may even add a little bit of violet. We'll see, I don't know about that. I'm gonna test it out though. Nope, I'm not gonna need violet, that's perfect. So we have like one, two highlights in the ears, very subtle but we have definite low lights 
on the border of the ear, especially on the inner ear area. So that's where I'm painting this and blending it in. So now I'm working my way up, working on the outer border of the inside of the ear that we're painting. Now with that color before this side dries, it's a little different because of where that, that light is and how that uh, ear is positioned. It's more on the inner ear and on the bottom left. This part is much lighter. Lovely, and it doesn't have to be perfect on that uh, border, guys, because we're going to outline it with some really pretty colors. Now, I didn't leave much room for myself, but here's where we're going to start mixing up a lot of those colors for this lamb. So I have my white and I'm gonna mix up white and violet again. Now the biggest mistake I see a lot of artists make when they're painting white animals is that they either start too dark or too light. Try starting first with a medium value. Lay as many down on the white animal as you can, then go to your lightest values and that will help you gauge how dark to make those dark values. The problem with starting too light is that it doesn't give you a whole lot of room to make layers to create that contrast and that depth. And then if you go too dark, it starts to look like, say, a gray animal or a brown animal instead of an animal that has white fur. And this doesn't have to be the exact color as me. We can make adjustments by adding more violet or more white to either darken it or lighten it later. So I'm gonna do white with sky blue now, just kind of like our sky. Again, I wanna keep this a medium value, so not make it, make it much, uh, a decent amount darker than the sky blue we added to the background. You can kind of eyeball it. I do that a lot, just, just test it out if you're not sure. Uh, darker for like these areas and right here is violet and raw sienna, but I'm going to use um, more raw sienna than violet. Oops, I got a little bit of pink in there, so I'm going to actually tell you guys to pull in some fluorescent pink. I'm going to make it work. So that's fluorescent pink, violet, and raw sienna. All right, so for next color, yellow ochre and white. So that's lots of white and a little bit of yellow ochre. Such a beautiful Easter colors. I don't know about you, but I find part of what is so therapeutic about painting is mixing the colors, especially with a palette knife. And the last one I think I'll do is orange. So orange, yellow ochre, and white is what I'll do next. So that's orange, yellow ochre, and white. So when you have the colors mixed, it sure does make it a lot easier to place them in the right areas and you only will have to focus on value. Of course, you can mix up colors along the way, but you at least have the main colors that you wanna work with. 
And for this, I will go with my size one round brush again. You know, it's funny, I actually forgot to mix up the color we'll start with, so that's okay. I'll just use my brush for this because we don't need much. It's a lot of white with a little bit of uh, permanent red. That's white with permanent red. I wanted a different pink to separate the colors. I, I wanted something a little different than what we used for the ears. So that's the color we'll use to fill in the nose and the lips. Here's a little color tip. When I have a lot of green in my background or even in the foreground, I like to add a variety of different pinks. Like we said before, the complement of green is red. Add a little white, you get pink, and then I'll add a variety of pinks. So some will have a little bit of violet in it. Some will have a little yellow in it. This is just one way I like to make a balanced, colorfully diverse painting. See how this is like this, kind of making a triangle and then it connects up. I'll just take a little bit of this pink underneath both nostrils. All right, so we haven't talked too much about that creative process, also called the ideation process, where you just let that inspiration and those ideas come out of you. If you've missed any of the videos in my recent Leap Beyond Technique series, where I talk about the creative process, starting with the egg, and then we hatch the eggs, and then there's a metamorphosis that goes on, and then to reveal that beautiful butterfly, that final masterpiece, we apply those final details. So right now, we're not at all focused on detail. Instead, we're focusing on testing out and hatching those eggs problem solving and seeing what works and what doesn't, applying that first layer so that we cover up all the white and doing lots and lots of problem solving. But the way I solve problems is very different to the way you solve problems. So throughout this tutorial, yes, you're following what I'm doing, but have the courage to explore in your own way. Solve problems in a different way than me. It's improvisation. Take what I'm doing, what's in your environment, how you feel, that inspiration in you, and just experiment. Let it flow. And what's the worst that could happen? So you make a mistake, you let it dry, you paint over it, and you try again. And you make another mistake, you let it dry, you paint over it, you pause the video, you're never stuck. All right, so then we're gonna work on the eyes. Once again, I didn't think of that color, but we just need a little bit of it. We don't need much. So I'm just gonna use white and lots of violet to make a dark violet, but a lighter value than the eyes. But as you can tell in the reference photo, because of so much light coming from behind, these areas around the eyes and around this part of the body is so much darker. So let's just keep that a dark to medium value. So that's lighter than the the eye area but still going to be much darker than the the fur around it and that's what we we'll use to paint right above both eyes and i'm using my size one round brush for this oh liner brush size one liner brush now try your best to keep the thickness of this line even on both eyes and no worries if you get a little bit into the actual eye we can touch that up at the end All right, so I'm gonna slow down the footage just a smidge so that you guys can keep up as we jump from all these different colors in the fur. We're not gonna worry just yet about texture. Our focus is on the medium to dark values that we'll be applying first. Now, if we were to use the most realistic colors for this lamb in the fur, we would go with more of a yellowish brown with little hints of orange as well. And wherever we see that color, even some grays in there too, 
on the left side, under the chin, the shadows underneath the body, that's where our focus is right now. As long as it has the relative lightness or darkness, we can use any color. So if we need to lighten it up, we just add a little bit more white. If we need to darken it, we can add maybe a little bit of phthalo blue or the dark color of violet. The last color that we mixed up, the yellow ochre and orange mixture, I'm applying that around the snout. I'll add it below the chin, little hints around the lips, and then if you skip two lines, right where that neckline is, that's where I'll be working down. Now there's a lot of folds in this sweet little lamb, especially around the neck area. So if you watch me first, I'm gonna skip a line, leave a gap, and then work in this little rounded area with another strip of this yellow orange. Now, as we test out colors and see where they fit, there's going to be some areas where we want it to still be wet so we can blend in, so we can adjust the colors. And that's what I'll do right here. I want to add a hint of pink and a slight bit more brown right here. So I'm pulling the first color we mixed with the fluorescent pink and raw sienna mixture. And let me ask you this, where is that light source coming from? That sunshine is hitting pretty hard from the upper right, which means our dark and medium values, again, mostly medium values, will be on the left side. Now looking ahead on this shoulder and on, along the lamb's neck, it gets progressively darker in value, but on the far edge of that shoulder, it's much lighter. So I'm gonna pull some of this violet into a corner, add some more violet to it to darken it up, and then again, work down along those lines, leaving gaps. So I'll leave a gap between this orange brown, create another strip that's rounded, and then leave another gap. In the areas where I'm leaving gaps, it's gonna be a lighter value. So I just wanna focus on these dark and medium values first. Now, if you watch me here, I'm pulling in more of that lighter violet and blending it down. This is where it gets hit with a little bit of the sunshine. Now, anytime body parts are touching and there's just this tight squeeze between them, I usually add a dark value. And I'm seeing now that the brown violet that we created that's right next to that orange isn't quite dark enough. So I'm adding in a little bit more violet. And I'll create a line separating this chest area from that leg. Now I'll move to the opposite leg and that little gap in between that area and continue on with this color. Now below this line, I'm not gonna fill in much before I pull in some of our violet, the lighter violet, and blending that to the left. I'm getting my brush clean and damp, however, before I pick up some of that lighter color.
Now I love the color that this violet and this very dark brown violet is making and my curiosity is curious as to how it would look on these lines along the right side of the neck now. So I combine a little bit of that brown with the lighter violet and start adding it. And pay attention to how I'm working in a curved horizontal motion left and right. Moving my brush in this way on that second line on the right side of the neck, I'm gonna work down to that right leg. But being careful not to get rid of that brown line that really shapes the chest where it connects to the leg. Now with this same brown violet mixture we've been using, I see it needs a little bit more shading on the chest next to the left leg. So I'll add a little bit more right there. Now this combo of our brown violet with the lavender, I'll mix that together so that we can add it to the shadow on that back leg. Anytime you see that something needs to be a little darker or a little lighter, while it's wet, you can add a little bit more violet to it or lighten it up by adding some white to it. Or if you're the kind of artist like me that really likes to be efficient and keep moving, I will do that at the end and find ways that I can add more contrast. I love babies, I love babies so much. All these little rolls of fat and it's just so cute. And I'm gonna continue with this violet brown, using it to outline these rolls, connecting it to that shadow, but not all the way. The gaps that I leave are intentional. The areas of white are meant for another color. Now here's where my brain says, okay, Lauren, that brownish violet is dominating too much. We need to pull in some different colors. Here I've got the color craving. So I'm thinking how I can add in blue, how I can pull in orange, how I can pull in more yellow. So we'll do that next. I love to combine violet with blue. So in transitioning to a blue, I start with my violet on the darker areas. So I'm gonna mix a little bit darker violet again with violet and that lavender and we're gonna add it to the legs, and I'll then blend that to a blue. So the next few steps, we'll have to work in a, at a steady pace so that our paint doesn't dry before adding in that blue. And just a reminder, the shadows will be on the opposite side of where that light source is hitting, and we already established that it's coming from the upper right, which means these medium values will go on the bottom left of these limbs. Now, if you're noticing that these violets and these browns are much, much darker than what I'm mixing, that is actually going too dark, especially because acrylics dries darker than what we see when it's wet. So then just add a little bit of white to it, even a little bit of pink to it. You can use any colors. You just want to adjust how dark or how light it is by adding a darker color like phalo blue or violet or permanent red, heck, even black. I wouldn't recommend it, but you can even do that. And to lighten it up, you can add yellow, you can add white, which is what I often do. You can even add a pink. All right, so now I'm pulling in some phalo blue and a tiny, tiny bit of violet into my violet mixture. On the far left little nub that we see, I'm gonna add it to the lower right area because that chest and body is creating a really dark shadow. Now on the right leg, I'll add it to the inner left, still leaving a lot of that violet there. 
Now you don't want to miss this part right here. It can be helpful when painting white animals. That front right leg is getting so much light and it's so white that it's sending light to that back leg. Hence why there's less shadows on the left side of that leg. Now moving on with this indigo color of the violet, white, and phthalo blue, I'm actually darkening up the fluffy folds of skin along the right side of the neck and along the chest. Because this indigo color that we're adding right now is slightly darker in value than the mixture of white and violet that we added earlier. Now how are you doing on color? Is it still so overwhelming for you? Is it still extremely confusing? Would you like to learn more about color theory without being more confused? Well, I've actually added all the things I've learned over the past three years studying color theory in my online animal art masterclass. Here, I work really hard to simplify and clarify the process of creating cheerful, vibrant, colorful pet and wildlife portraits. Now this class doesn't at all talk about the creative process and how you can create your own original animal art, but what it does focus on is technique. It's step-by-step real-time tutorials for pets and wildlife where you can learn and apply my fundamental techniques for drawing, for using acrylic paint, and my color methods. Now, if this would bless you or a friend, especially with anxiety, depression, or addiction, the very thing I used to battle with that led me to animal art, check out the links down below to the online animal art masterclass. All right, so we laid down majority of the medium and dark values. Definitely not all of them, but I like to at this point jump to my lightest values when I'm painting white fur because again, I want to cover up the white and by going to the lightest values and I'm starting with my yellow ochre and white mixture, I'm working beneath that chin line above that strip of orange, but this often prevents me from going too dark when I can gauge it better having those lightest values on there. And the other reason, when I'm going this abstract in color, I can see the complements next to each other. I'm adding yellow when we've added a lot of violet. So not only does this help me judge value, but also color. Those are two very different things. Yes, I can use any color I want, but there are more optimal color choices that help to create color harmony. So with this yellow ochre and white mixture, I'm working up around that right ear. Now here's another egg that I tested. I wasn't quite sure what color I wanted to use to create the shadow along the eyes, which begins on the inner part of the outer border around the ear, and I tested out some more violet. So while this is wet, I added a little bit of my violet and white mixture. I'm gonna quickly pick that up and blend that into the inner ear part where we're painting this yellow ochre and white strip, but then I thought, I have quite a bit of this similar value purple in the background around this area, which could cause this lamb's face to kind of get lost in the background, and I don't want that. So I thought to myself here, I'll just continue with this violet and yellow on the both ears, and then add more blue shadows around the eyes. And how I'll prevent that blue on the eyes to compete with the blue in the background is I'll make it a much darker value. All right, so if you noticed, I washed off my brush so that I could pick up more of the yellow ochre and white mixture. I made sure my brush was clean and damp. I'm gonna outline the white around the pinkish orange for the inside of the ear. And then while that's wet, I'll go in with my violet and white mixture. Now, as far as adding violet to this ear, we're gonna hold off on that there's a bit darker value that I'll be adding in a little bit. While we're on this yellow, I'll just continue covering up that white.
All right, this might get a little confusing here where I'm placing this, but first here I'm adding it inside the snout to the right of the nose first, and then I'll leave a gap on the left side of the snout and work on that jaw area on the left side of the nose. The reason I'm doing this is because I don't just want to use yellow for the whole face. So I'm just testing this color out in certain areas, leaving those intentional gaps where I'll use different colors of similar value in those gaps. All right, and next I'll work a little bit along the top left of the head, and then I'll cut in underneath that line below the right eye, going up a little bit with the yellow. All right, face, we're gonna pause from you for a second and move on to the body. At an angle, I'll be adding this yellow fully painting in that right shoulder, working in and around those blues and violets. All right, so at this point, that yellow ochre and white mixture up against that violet and white and some of the blue is quite a jump. We need a joiner color to join those together nicely. A little bit darker value than the yellow ochre and white, a little bit lighter value than the blues and violets. And a great one for that is the orange and yellow ochre mixture we made right here. And in that curved, somewhat horizontal way, working up along the chest and that shoulder, I'll be adding this into the yellow ochre and overlapping the violets and blues. But I don't stop there. I bring it in between the folds of skin, as well as on that right leg. Now this is where my brush starts to get a little sticky, a little tacky, pulling on my canvas, so I'm gonna wash it off. I'm gonna go back to my orange and yellow ochre mixture. We're gonna add lots of it to the chest, connecting those blues and violets on both sides together. Now the motion of my brush is changing. I'm a little bit less at an angle and, and more left to right. Still, however, creating a bit of a curve. I wanna get that texture down even now and also as I'm overlapping those violets and blues, I'm not entirely covering them up. So right now we're doing thicker, more joined brush strokes, but to create the wool, those really tight curls later on, I'll be doing the dab technique, adding little dabs here and there to kind of create the highlighted curls. Now when using this technique and using abstract colors, it's really important that you find ways to separate the different layers and the different values without adding too much of one color. Like for instance, my yellow ochre and white. I 
didn't want to cover up the entire shoulder and neck with this yellow, even though I could have. I wanted to mix it up and I then go into my yellow ochre and white mixture. I pull that into a separate pile, adding in more yellow ochre to darken that value and I add it along the side of the neck. Now I'll keep working this color. I could have made it just a little bit lighter. So I would even tell you to add more white to it so it's not so close to the mixture of yellow ochre and orange. And remember I talked about texture? Well, you'll see in some areas I'll start to do dabs. All right, so we've been neglecting the lower body. I'm gonna use this color on that right leg, working down along the front right leg and then jumping to that back leg. Now with this darker yellow ochre mixture, I recommend you watch me as I place this along that back leg. Now this wasn't intentional, but when I picked up some paint, I accidentally got some brown in it, but I rolled with it. This is actually where I added pink later. So I'm gonna keep it, keep working with my yellow ochre mixture. So watch me and then you can try it yourself. All right, we haven't touched that pink yet, but this is the perfect color to paint over that area that I pulled in a bit more brown. And I'll add this to the shadow along that back leg and up a little bit along the side. All right, so I'm gonna wash up my brush, make sure it's clean and damp, and go back to our darker mixture of yellow ochre and white. We'll start adding it to the front right leg. Now I wash up my brush because I then move to a indigo mixture. We go back to that with our violet, white, and phthalo blue. That's a medium value indigo with violet, phthalo blue, and white because I plan to have taller blades of grass here that will cast a bit of a shadow on this leg. And I love this color so much, I use it to define that hoof on the back leg. All right, so we are gonna work back on that face, but what I should have done here before then is clean out my water. So I recommend you do that before we get started. We've been working with darker colors. This is a much lighter blue and we don't wanna muddy it up. But when you're ready, I'm gonna apply this light blue. It's the phthalo blue with lots of white. And starting with that left eye, I'll be using smaller dabs and clusters of lines working around the purple above and below both eyes representing the shadow being casted from the ears. Now on the top of the head and the center of the forehead, there's really not a lot of shadows. So going into that area, I'll use dabs and very thin, short lines that'll cluster together. Now, as I add this blue to the top of the right eye, I'll leave a white border that where the light is hitting it slightly. We'll fill that in with a different color later. And pay close attention to how I'm applying this blue to the top of the left side of the face. 
I am leaving the thinnest white gap separating the left side of the face to this top of the snout. All right, once again, we're gonna leave the face and work down along the left side of the body. But here's the big but, guys. I should have added more white to this because if we use this blue to create the shadows around the eyes, then this should not be as dark for the highlights around the left side of the body. Does that make sense? So do add some more white to this or even go with a different color I'll recommend some like turquoise with a little bit more white than we added here. Or even a peach color, so that's pink and orange, with some white. You can also again go with the violet. Just make sure there's more white so it's a lighter value than the violets we already have around there. Now because I'm going over a lot of layers, my brush strokes are going to get smaller. They're going to turn into more dabs. However, the areas I use this color to cover up the white of the canvas, it'll be more filling in. And by the way, if you decide to use a turquoise for this, that's made by using either phalo blue, grass green, and lots of white. Or you can either go with a sky blue, which I have on my paint palette and I don't end up using, mixed with a little bit of cadmium yellow and lots of white. That makes that light, beautiful turquoise. There's also the paint color, bright aqua green. It's the most beautiful, vibrant turquoise by Master's Touch. All right, so I'm working on the kneecap of that front right leg. You can tell my brush strokes are very loose. They're getting a little bit more wispy, a little bit shorter, more dabs as well. And then I just want to capture that triangular highlight on that back leg on the hoof. And still leaving a white outline, I'll just add a tiny little bit of this blue along the left side of the snout by the lips. All right, so pause if you need to catch up, if you wanna do some touch-ups. I'm gonna to wash up my brush thoroughly, and I'm gonna go back to my yellow of the white with yellow ochre. Again, with those dabs and looser textured brush strokes, I'm gonna pull that yellow in more to the left and also fill in the rest of that front right leg. All right, so now we're gonna work on the lamb's back, filling in the white on that back leg and cutting into those folds. Now I get a little stumped here on that back leg because it was getting so much light. So I kind of leave a little gap. I start the top of that back leg. I pause to think about it. And then I move to that neck area, which looks a little confusing. So I add in a little bit more of my yellow ochre and white mixture. Plus, and you'll see in a moment, some added pink. That's my raw sienna and pink mixture. I'll go back to blend that in with that yellow ochre right on my canvas. And then that's when it came to me as to how I'm gonna fill in the white of that back leg. Going back to my white and phalo blue mixture, that light blue, 
creating a bit of a shadow on the bottom of that back leg. Again, because I'm gonna add taller grass in this area. Then to join the yellow with the orange brown and violet, I added a little bit more of that blue in between there, washed my brush out, and we're back now with our white and yellow ochre. So anytime you plan to add grass to your animal portraits, always make sure you have some shadows in that area because it's so much harder to fill in shadows at the end. Because remember, we're layering this, these blades of grass over top the lamb. Now here I see the most subtle little shadow right along the right side of the snout. And so I'm washing my brush, picking up just the smallest amount of my blue, honestly just a dab or two in that curve, almost vertical way without getting into that yellow ochre so I don't make a green. And because the white that we have left on the face is where the sun is really hitting the lamb, I want this to be a very light value I'm gonna mix lots of white with the yellow ochre and white mixture. And for the next 12 minutes about, we'll use this color to not only fill in the white, but all the areas on the right of the lamb where the sun is hitting the strongest, where it nearly looks white, but it could also be a little bit of a light brown or a light yellow. Now there will be a few dabs here and there on the left side of the lamb, but majority will be these loose, thick, and tiny brush strokes that we'll be adding on the right side of the lamb. So let's really focus on those strongest highlights now. Now, if we were zoomed in a little bit in this reference photo, I would define the actual tight curls a bit more, a lot more than what we're doing here. But because from the distance of this reference photo, we can just barely make out the texture of the, the wool, I'm using circles, dots, little dabs and short little stubby brush strokes to create that texture. Now, if you notice here, getting that texture, I just barely touch the canvas. I'm hardly putting any pressure on my brush to create this. And I'm using the dry brush technique where I don't pull in more paint until I have almost no paint left on my brush, which creates a thinner, less white application. But when I really need it to be a bold, strong white yellow, I apply more paint to my brush. All right, so next we're gonna move on to those ears and getting the highlights on those ears. I just wanna note here, I lift up just ever so slightly with this very white yellow above the left eye. 
You don't need much, but in a moment you'll see that I add just the smallest bit to lift that up. Now getting the texture and the values right on the right side of the snout was tricky. So I add a few dabs, I take a look, I need some time to think on it, and to keep my momentum up, I then work on those legs. Now if these sporadic dab-like brush strokes feel weird, you're doing it right. Get loose here, allow things to be imperfect. We can always make adjustments at the end. We're still just adding our rounds of layers, our light, medium, and dark values. Now, if I had to redo this painting, I would go with a different color for the strip above the horizon line. If you notice, as we're adding these highlights, this is very close in value to that area. So to compensate for that with these competing values, I added lots of dabs that still allowed that bottom layer of the yellow ochre and white to shine through. So the goal is not to cover up, it's just to add little accents. These top end layers, we're towards the end, these are those top layers. All right, so we have just a small amount of white areas left, ever so small, but one color we haven't mixed is phthalo blue and violet by itself without white and that real strong dominant color we'll use to fill in the left side of the hoof where it's hardly getting any light. Next we want to make sure we have a clean damp brush because we're going back to our light blue. We're going to start refining things, cleaning them up giving it a little scrub so that things get a little tighter, getting this little precious baby lamb almost entirely finished, almost, before we move to painting that tall grass over top. So ever so carefully with the light blue, I brought it up a little bit above that left eye. I washed my brush out again. Now I'm mixing up a darker violet with violet and a bit of white, and we're adding that shadow in that we added on the right ear, we're making this one a darker value. Now on that left ear, because the sunshine is hitting the back right of that ear, that shadow is gonna be casted along the yellow ochre and white strip along the border on the left side. So rule of thumb here, wherever that light is hitting strongest, the opposite side is usually gonna be a strong shadow. But that does not mean we have to go super dark, especially if we're painting white animals. All right, so if you missed that, I just added that same violet to the right ear on both inner areas and just the smallest bit on the top of that left ear, but more towards the inner ear. And looking at this painting now, again, an area that I would improve that you can even do now is add that very same violet on the top border, definitely on that right ear. So we just went towards the inner ear along the strip of white and yellow ochre, but that shadow is also above there too. All right, so next we're gonna pull this light blue, pull it aside, add lots more white to it, very similarly to what we did with the yellow ochre and white, adding more white to it, and that will be another highlight that we do on the left side, adding those left side highlights with a light blue. Now we need just a very small amount of paint on our brush because we're very carefully gonna fill in the rest of that white where we left those gaps on the left side of that face. And we don't wanna affect proportions here, so take your time. Absolutely pause the screen if you need to and work at your own pace. Now don't miss this part right here. I add this light blue over top that joining area of yellow and blue, and it works. It's another sneaky way of joining those two values. Subtle adjustments, 
It's just small little dabs here and there that pull the painting together. That's what our goal is for this phase. Now don't miss this part here. I add a little bit of that light blue to join these two values here below and to the left of that right eye and tone down the darkness of that small little bit of blue we added to the right of the snout. That was just a smidge too dark. So this is the perfect blue for that. Now moving to the little lamb's left side, we're gonna outline that side, even working around some of those folds. I'll add small dabs of this blue on the left side of the tiny bit of left leg we see and lines that have gaps between them because we're not filling in, we're just adding little accents where that light is hitting along the chest as well as along the front right leg and that back leg too. In some areas, this light blue works as a joiner color as well as a highlight. And if you're new to my channel, when I say joiner color, I mean a medium value, a middle value that connects those highlights with the dark values, joining them together so there's this nice smooth transition from dark to medium to light. Now, I honestly don't know if this was entirely necessary. You're welcome to add it if you feel like it. I added a very thin highlight of light blue to the far left of that purple strip along the left ear. Now this is a reminder that less is often more. Be careful not to overwork your painting. I'm actually stepping back from my painting, looking at it from relatively far away, and then coming back to it to do little dabs here and there. Now I'm going to add a highlight that's extremely helpful and joining this area right here on the middle of the top of the snout, right above the nose. And with a few dabs, I draw that up. Now for about the next three or four minutes, we'll be refining using this light blue. Tightening things up one little dab at a time here and there. I'll add some to the top of the left ear along the border. With curved lines, I'll outline the folds on the upper neck on the left side. To give the illusion of those tight curls, I'll add the tiniest little thin dots along that right shoulder and along the back leg. I'll use this blue as a joiner color, carefully painting in between those folds on the belly. Now you may not see this, but I can. I have little white specks where I still have the white of the canvas, and so I use this blue to fill that in. And now I'm gonna make that blue a bit darker, pulling in phthalo blue into that light blue. I don't wanna lose that darkness in the blue on the left side of the face. So I'm adding that back in with tight clusters of lines. And before I wash out my brush to move to our yellow ochre mixture, I'll just add a few more dabs with this blue. So once my brush is clean and damp, I'm gonna make a darker mixture of yellow ochre and white. I can even pull that mixture, add more yellow ochre to it, and this is a slightly darker value than that light blue. However, it can also be used as a joiner color. Are you starting to see how I do this, how I wrap it up at the end? I use a lot of my medium values. Now here's the thing, if your light blue is still wet, it'll create a green. So we don't want that. Let your canvas dry for a bit and then you can apply these steps. Like for example here, for me, I added a few dabs along the chest, connecting the light blue with some of the violets and it was mixing. And we don't really want that green, we want to keep it a darker yellow. All right, creative, so we're just a few dabs away with their light blue from painting the grass. So I'm going back to my very light blue mixture with lots more white with the clean damp brush using clusters of very short thin lines. I'm gonna overlap this light blue over top that medium blue into the light yellow. 
and this is along the forehead. And the last two highlights with this light blue is to the left of that chin. And two little dabs for more texture, more like curved lines along the left of the neck. Now we are not actually done with the lamb, but it's mostly completed so that we can work the areas around the legs with our grass green and phalo blue and yellow. Again, that's phalo blue, grass green, and a good amount of yellow. You'll really need a lot of yellow. I'm gonna go back to the ankle brush, which we want to keep that flat edge as flat as possible. When we get started with the grass, we're gonna position our brush vertically so we can do these vertical brush strokes all about the same length and width. I'd like you to just test this out one stroke at a time, creating these thin, long blades of grass, getting the feel for this technique. And then after a little bit of practice, I'm gonna start adding a little bit of white. I'm gonna work on the lower right side, cutting carefully over top that white strip above the horizon line with those blades of grass and then work down and then moving to the left. Yeah, keep that flat edge as flat as possible. So what I'll do is I'll just flatten my brush right on my paint palette and also wash it off. If you really wanna get it thin and clean, pick up a small amount of paint and then add those lines. Now do not add too much white this soon. We wanna layer from dark to medium to light and there's lots of layers in grass. The more layers, the better. So just take your time, be careful not to add too much yellow or too much white, but kind of feel it out. All right, so next layer, I'm gonna go a little bit lighter, adding in more grass green, no phalo blue this time, cadmium yellow and a little bit of white. That's grass green, cadmium yellow and a bit of white. Now eventually, at the end, we'll be adding those shadows we see to the far left. We see a real strong shadow to the left of the baby lamb and behind that area is much lighter green and in front. So that's where I'm going to focus those light greens.
And for another highlight, I'm adding more cadmium yellow and adding a little bit more white. Another lighter layer of green. All right, guys, so we're gonna let those layers of green dry. We'll go back to it to add those final layers, but now we're gonna add the final details to the lamb, adding more contrast, adding more medium values, and any final highlights that, that we missed. So I noticed that the chin is missing a bit of a shadow. So I'm gonna mix up a darker yellow mixture of yellow ochre and white. Now this needs to be a medium value, but it's the shadow on this area. Carefully adding a few dabs to that chin and then on the right side of the jaw. And then that's when I notice the top of the head looks a little too dark. It needs to be lighter. So with the yellow left on my brush, I pull in lots more white and highlight that along with the left side of the jaw. Now I want to separate those blues on the left side of the lamb with the blues in the background. And this being a very good highlight, I'm gonna very carefully outline that side on the left. At the end of the painting process, we really want to observe what colors are competing too heavily with one another. We can add in highlights or even lowlights that help separate them. And stop right there. I don't think this is at all necessary to apply this darker value of yellow in front of that eye. So avoid the mistake that I made. I end up taking it out at the very, very end with a much lighter value of yellow ochre and white. And speaking of which, I'm gonna use a very light white and yellow ochre mixture to add more highlights on the lamb's back, guided along those rolls, those folds of skin, and on that front right leg. Now I'm really in the zone here, just adding these final touches. I should have washed my brush out here, but I did not. I recommend you do. And then we'll go into that light blue, getting a bit more loose, adding more of that wool texture. Little dabs here, little dabs there, not covering up too much. Now I want to save you the mistake, learn from mine, unless you feel like your painting needs it, but this yellow ochre, once again, doesn't need to be here. I think it takes away from the painting. But again, step away, look at what your painting needs, and take into consideration what I'm doing. Now that little tiny itty bitty hoof needs a highlight, we didn't add that yet. So I'm gonna use yellow ochre and lots of white for that.
and with that same color, I'll add a strong highlight right along the heel of that back leg. And then the official final highlights and dabs along the right side of the lamb's body. All right, so I've taught you several different ways that we can create contrast in our painting. One very obvious one is the use of light and shadow, as well as size and the shapes, texture, value, and color. What I'm doing here is adding strong contrast. I added more violet to that brown and violet mixture that we mixed up with our palette knife. I'm darkening these shadows, making them just a little bit darker. So we have such a range of values here, a range of darks, a range of medium values, and definitely a range of light values. Now more of that dry brush technique where I don't go back in to pick up more paint. I just use the little bit left on my brush so it's not such a saturated color. It's a little bit more faded. I add that to the shadows on the front of the body. And then ending this color with a few dabs around the belly. Have you stepped back from your painting yet? I had a good long look and I see one thing that will just wrap this up, bring it all together, and that's a very light highlight of white and yellow ochre along that left ear and the left side of the face. Just a very careful thin line going along those areas. And boy, did that help. Now I wanted to give you a little bit different view, a side view and up close of this grass. I'll be adding that shadow on the left very soon, but I still wanna keep adding more and more layers of the grass green, yellow with a little bit of white. Grass takes me quite a while because I wanna slowly build from that dark to the medium to the light. So take your time here. The other difference is that I'm using my size one liner brush to really have thin, carefully placed, refined lines over top. And again, we wanna make the front area a lighter green and the back behind the lamb, but making sure that the areas around the lamb is a bit darker and to the left where that shadow is. Now I'm not just applying up and down, perfectly straight vertical blades of grass. I'm having some overlapping each other that are slightly curved to the left or curved to the right. Have a little bit more movement in the grass instead of having all these straight lines. All right, so here I go mixing up grass green, phthalo blue, and get this, a little bit of permanent red. Yep, I'm adding red to this because it's the complement of green. It makes a very rich, beautiful dark green that works so nicely. And the same technique where I'm adding lines clustered closely together, I will use to fill in that shadow. I'm not just gonna make a boxy shadow. I'm going to cut it in to the grass that's already there. Now we'll do the same thing around the bottom of the lamb because that's going to displace some of the grass and create that shadow. I'll do that just a little bit within these little curves and crevices. Now within those shaded areas, as long as they're not too long, you can add blades of grass layered over top the lamb. But anything sticking out, hitting that sunshine or the sunshine hitting it, 
is going to be highlighted at the top of that blade of grass. Just remember that. And I'm back to my very light green. This is probably one of the lightest greens I've applied yet with lots of yellow and even more white. Now this is where we really want to use that color with the very light green to layer over top the lamb. Now if it's too light, just add a bit of grass green and it'll help stand out a bit better. All right, creatives, we have reached the end of our lamb tutorial. If you are pleased with your creations and or you have any questions, I have a public YouTube community group on Facebook and we share our artwork there. I have that link down below. And let me know down below if you have any tutorial requests. And don't forget, Happy Easter! Easter!